Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we're going to be highlighting some very fun plants that will bring you months of interest and seasons full of color all year round. If you plant some of these plants throughout your garden, you're going to have four seasons of color because it is the fall and it is the perfect time to be out in your garden planting those shrubs and those perennials and those trees. I'll go ahead and let you know that you may notice we're in a different location today. We are in production greenhouse number two because we are having a cold front come through today. And so it is really windy outside and wind and making videos do not go together. So hence we are here up at the production lot in the greenhouse. Now, without further ado, I have got a beautiful selection of plants here that I want to share with you. We're really gonna be focusing on perennials and shrubs today. This is what we currently have at the nursery that is really some fun plants. Maybe we haven't talked about a lot here lately um, or recently, and so I wanna introduce them to you. Maybe you have forgotten about them. We will put all of your information all the pictures up on the screen for you because we are in the end of October going into November really, really quickly. Um, and so obviously things are not flowering maybe like they would be. So we're going to start from my right and work around to the left. Now you will notice that I have a handful of tags in my hand because one of the reasons that we, one of the many reasons that we love proven winners is because they give you great plant information in the tag. It is fantastic. So if you have a proven winners plant and you're not quite sure what to do um, or the specifications on it, if you're in a nursery, open up that tag and look at it. Also, their website is, has invaluable resources on it. Great pictures, everything you've ever wanted to know about their plants, just simply go to provenwinners.com, type in the name of your plant in the search bar and it will bring it up and tell you maintenance notes, um, graphics, just everything you've ever imagined, plants that you can plant with it, so forth and so on. Without further ado, let's get going. Here to the far right, up front, is this sweet little forsythia. We call them yellow bells here in the south, or at least that's what I did growing up. We called them yellow bells. This is Show Off Sugar Baby. Now, you may remember that way back in the spring, we were talking about Show Off. Well, Show Off is the full-size forsythia. Sugar Baby is the nice, small, petite one. Yellow bells will be one of the first things that bloom in the garden coming out of winter. Ours bloomed really like early March. So before they even put on their green leaves, their stems are absolutely covered in this dense, beautiful, bright yellow bell shaped flower. Sugar Baby is hardy in zones five to eight. It is gonna be a full sun to part shade. So that means at a minimum, it needs I would say five hours of direct sunlight, five hours or more. It is only going to be two to three feet tall and wide. Traditionally, forsythias can, can be pretty large. Sugar baby, nice and petite, fantastic addition to your landscape, huge, massive um, pop of color in the early spring. It's going to have a medium deer resistance because it does have the leaves on it are quite, um, tough I would say so not a high but not a low it's just right there in the middle um, it is a fantastic one for that early spring color and then the rest of the season it gives you that nice upright structure to it and nice dark green leaves that will be a great backdrop for something else so show off sugar baby is a great option if you are looking for very early spring color we've got three hydrangeas that we're going to highlight these are fantastic and all three of them are relatively new well they are they're all new to the market either this year or this coming year so what we have first this is quick fire fab you may be familiar with both quick fire and little quick fire well this is quick fire fab quick fire fab is hardy in zones three to eight it is going to be sun to part shade it is going to be six to eight feet tall five to six feet wide. So it really is kind of what I say, like the teenager of the quick fire family. So you have quick fire, which is like the big daddy. You have little quick fire, which is 
the young child and then you have quick fire fab right there in the middle um, still those same great panicle blooms that we love white to a nice little red even here in the south our quick fires will turn um, you know sometimes we we struggle with panicles turning because of our hot humid nights quick fire will turn um, nice medium size shape to it so depending on your bed you can either go in the middle of your bed or the back of your bed if you have a really large container you could do that i know that some people really enjoy putting those hydrangeas in their containers you certainly can do that um, and then this is going to be a perfect one for a hedge if you want to do a nice hedge in the back of your bed this would be a great option to um, use and they've got nice strong sturdy stems that are very upright that are not going to flop fantastic um, hydrangea it is also going to be one of the earliest blooming hydrangeas so sometimes panicles can be a little bit late because they bloom on new growth quick fire fab is going to be one of your earliest bloomers you still will need to trim her in late winter coming into spring to give her that nice big boost to go ahead and put out some new growth which means new flowers then back here in the back we have limelight prime now again this was a new one this year limelight prime is going to be hardy in zones three to eight it's another panicle hydrangea sun to part shade i would recommend if you're on that lower end of those or the higher end rather of the zones those warmer um, zones that if you can give your hydrangeas a break from the afternoon sun then that is the most desirable because that way they just get a little break from the hot intense sun and the blooms will hold a little bit longer limelight prime again it's kind of like quick fire fab it's right there in the middle between limelight and little lime it is going to be four to six tall four to five wide much more of an upright habit than the full round shape of like a limelight or a little lime we have been growing these here at the nursery um, all summer long and they have got some really nice strong sturdy stems I know a lot of customers complain about that their panicle hydrangeas get real floppy when the blooms are nice and full and you had either a rainstorm or a windstorm you complain that they are nice that, that you know that the stems fall over and just won't bounce back up the limelight prime in our experience just this summer really strong stems really upright um, but still give you that gorgeous creamy white panicle hydra uh, hydrangea bloom that will turn to a lime again you will need to prune her in late winter coming into spring for us that's like anywhere from mid-february to early march again that way she'll put on new growth and that you will get your blooms every single year um let's see now now this is a new one new 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 one and it is going to be really fun you can tell probably how nice and thick the foliage is on this let's dance arriba so she is a really fun little petite hydrangea that is brand new she will only be two to three feet tall and wide zones four to nine so very very um, hardy very adaptable to a wide range of different zones they consider this they just call it a re-blooming hydrangea it is going to be one of the most prolific re-blooming hydrangeas and the color will be dependent on your soil's ph level so if you're really acidic like we are we're going to have really kind of those um, deep violet blooms and if you're soil ph level is on the other end of the spectrum you're going to have beautiful pink blooms nice big huge traditional mop head blooms on it it is going to be for sun to part shade just an absolutely gorgeous hydrangea i can't wait she's got one bud on her because these are ones that we were started to grow this summer so we've not even seen her bloom yet but according to the pictures she is a stunner so this would be a fantastic that she is petite that you could put in the front of your landscape again if you can put a couple of them together in that same area makes a massive impact and not only is she going to be one of the fantastic best performing re-blooming hydrangeas 
going into fall, she's gonna have lots of color. So you're gonna have just a long period of time with blooms and interest on this hydrangea. So super excited about this. Again, with most of all of these hydrangeas, hydrangeas do like to have moist soil, but they don't like to be sitting in like wet, constant um, dampness. So they need to be well watered, but it needs to be well draining water. So super excited about those hydrangeas and um, cannot wait to get a riba into the landscape sometime soon. Now we're gonna turn our attention to a couple of perennials that I have here at my feet. Um, the first one we're gonna do is an interesting one in the fact of this is called heaven scent and this has some of the most unique foliage on it um, it is super soft very very tender um, and this is one that if you look on the proven winners tag with the perennials on the back flip over the back and it tells you all the great information on there she is hardy in zones three to seven now, if you've been around me for very long, you will know that I look at plants in their hardiness zones. And because we are a zone 7B in the south with hot, humid nights, if a plant is only hardy to zone 7, I don't normally even look at it. I'm like, we're too hot. It's not going to work. But Proven Winners, in their geniusness, sends us these trial plants. And so Walter's Gardens, who is the perennial house, sent us this and we trialed it in the pines one winter nope one summer so in the pines if you remember it is different parts of it can be really shady with just a little bit of filtered sun well heaven scent did amazing did fantastic even with our hot humid nights we keep them well watered they do great and in the spring they have the most sweetest um, stalks of blue flowers so this is a fantastic perennial for the shade garden if you're in zones six or seven i would even say your deep shade garden just a really unique habit on it nice and soft and tender but with that soft tender foliage if you have deer you might want to protect this somehow um, because it is really tender and i can only imagine that the deer and the rabbits would love to get their lips on that tender little foliage this is the perfect companion for hostas um, it has those like i said those little sweet little flowers that are blue and they smell good so hardy zones three to seven 15 um, inches wide and about 18 inches tall. That 18 inches also includes the flower stalk. So that way, um, this would be a great one for the front of the bed or even in a container. Um, just an absolutely beautiful one. Love this. Ha! Huh, so pretty. Now, we have the other little sweet friend here that would also pair really well with the heaven scent, this is Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds Brunera is another shade to park shade perennial. Now, still has fantastic foliage, lots of that green with that silver um, kind of lace overlay on it. This is gonna be definitely more deer resistant because the leaves are what I can best describe as hairy. So they have these little fine hairs on them that they're rough. Now they're not rough for us, they don't hurt us, but the deer particularly may not like them very much. So shade to part shade, it is gonna be hardy in zones three to eight. So again, we're 7B, so this needs a good bit of shade filtered sun it can handle or just maybe an hour or two of the early morning sun other than that it needs to be in the shade the leaves on this guy can be nine to ten inches wide just huge so we started these um, walters sent us these as liners um, or plugs so a nice little baby plant been then growing them out but you can already see how this leaf is growing really well fantastic companion for your shade garden for those hostas the eucharas the the heaven scent all of those other kinds of shade plants be fantastic it will be both the heaven scent and the jack of diamonds are like a hosta in the fact of once we have a frost a freeze it will kill back the foliage and the plants will disappear for the winter and then come early spring they emerge and come out of dormancy very very happy so two great shade perennials for us now 
we all love our butterflies don't we pugster pinker so pugster pinker is the newest addition to the pugster family of butterfly bushes from proven winners now pugsters are fantastic because they're petite a lot of times when i talk to folks who have um gardens maybe a little bit but not a lot here within the within the past couple of years maybe you say butterfly bush and they're like oh no i don't have room for a butterfly bush because butterfly bushes in the past were always the huge giant ones pugster is a nice it's only a two by two two feet tall two feet wide pinker has really nice deep um closest to hot pink that they have gotten so far um, pugster pink is more like a baby doll pink this is a nice more vibrant pink of course your butterfly bushes do love the sun so you want to put them in the hottest part of your yard but they can do it says sun to part shade so if you don't have full sun you only have an area that gets maybe five hours of sun they will still work um, fantastic high deer resistance because their um, butterfly bushes do have some sort of a fragrance to them and they're kind of woody and and hard and so the deer do not like them for, as a general rule i know some of you just can't put anything in your yard but they do have a high deer resistance um, butterfly bushes again remember they do not like to have wet feet so do not overwater your pugsters or any of your butterfly bushes they like to be dry and neglected which is fantastic next we have a viburnum and this is going to be a beautiful evergreen viburnum that is going to get huge sweet talker sweet talker viburnum is a fragrant viburnum that puts on these beautiful delicate pink blooms in the early early spring it's going to be one of the first blooming shrubs in your garden it will go for sun to part shade hardy in zones seven to eight so it's pretty limited for our as far as the country zones seven to eight this is one of those few it's one of the few plants that the southerners get so yay we get sweet talker she is going to be eight to ten feet tall three to five feet wide very ha much have that columnar habit so if you need to have some structure in your garden year round in the back of your bed or you're looking to kind of hide something sweet talker would be a great option for you um, really nice thick tough leaves on them it does have a medium deer resistance to it but you can tell even with some of that those little bit of cool temperatures that we've been getting they do are starting to go ahead and start to turn so it's going to have beautiful um, fall color to it as well but this is going to be a great option for you folks in the warmer climates that need some evergreen structure but not really wide again upright really sweet smelling blooms in the early spring down here in front of me is a trio of beautiful candy corn we had to talk about candy corn because Halloween is just a few days away and it is the season for candy corn. I know some people have really strong opinions on candy corn the candy, but everybody that we have seen and talked to loves candy corn the spirea. So this is what this is. This is double play candy corn. It is a nice petite deciduous shrub that will only be one and a half to two feet tall and wide. It is deciduous, but you can tell it has the most vibrant foliage on it you have ever seen. And it got its name for a very good reason, because it has that kind of that tri-color candy corn effect on it. In the spring, it does beautiful hot, plink, hot pink blooms on it. It is going to be sun to part shade, hardy in zones four to seven. Again, so if we are in those warmer climates, you can give it a break in the afternoon that would be fantastic or if you're able to put on irrigation then that is great as well but even though it may be after it blooms and it's beautiful just the foliage alone if it never bloomed the foliage on this plant would be worth it because it is just absolutely fantastic it is beautiful you want to prune it after it flowers so if you need to give it a little shape you can give it a little shape after it blooms in the springtime nice neat tidy habit on its own if you needed to shape it up a little bit you could but not um, not too bad at all just 
fantastic. Grabs your attention and says, hello, look at me. And you can see with us putting them in the, in the groupings of three right here, it makes a big impact. So even when you're looking at any of these plants, when you can pair them together um, with another of the same plant and kind of those groupings of like three, close together, it makes a huge impact, especially from a great distance. So if people don't see your house really up close, but from far away, consider putting several of the same plants within that area. It makes a big impact from a long distance away. And last but not least, we are going to do a perennial grass. This is the Prairie Winds Cheyenne Sky. Already she is turning on her fall colors with the red and the burgundy beautiful top um, color fall colors here it's got their little plumes up it's going to be three feet tall full sun this is a um, panicum type of grass so full sun it is definitely going to be more upright and columnar it's not going to be like desert plains where it's that fountain grass and it kind of flows over and falls over very upright you're going to space them about really it depends on the look you're going for but you could put them as close together as 18 inches because they are basically just straight up hardy in zones four to nine again very adaptable um, they do the purple flower panicles in late summer so if you look around your garden right now and you're saying to yourself self I need some extra, you know, texture and color in my garden this time of year. I would really highly recommend that you look at adding some perennial grasses to your landscape. This is the time of year that the vast majority of the uh, perennial grasses are really putting on a show because they had their plumes. Now they're putting on their fall colors. It just brings great whimsy to your garden. You can even cut the plumes and add it to arrangements or if you have something special, stick them in those arrangements. Really, really pretty. Um, again, these perennial grasses are so easy. Bugs really don't like them. Um, once you get them established, they are hands off. The only maintenance that you're going to do on your perennial grasses is going out of winter, coming into spring. You're going to gather them up and you're going to cut them off because you want to cut them off all of this um, old foliage off before the new foliage emerges in spring. Yes, once a frost or a freeze comes, all this foliage will turn brown. If that bothers you, go ahead and cut it back. You don't have to worry about it. But I know a lot of people, myself included, will leave that brown foliage during the winter because it still brings you some height and texture to the garden, even though it is brown. And then for us, again, I'll probably around even the beginning of February, gather them up like ponytails and either take the clippers, scissors, or the hedge trimmers, and you just cut them about four to six inches above the soil level. I mean, you just flat top them. And then again, those new growth emergence, and it's just this beautiful, green, healthy plant. Um, I hope you have found this informative. I hope you have found something to add to your garden. Put it in your gardening journal for you to take a look at, maybe find some interest in sticking it in there. Again, if you want some more information, just go to provenwinners.com, put your plant name into the search bar. It will come up and tell you all the information you've ever wanted to know about it. Um, but as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.